And what we're going to be doing today is just a, you know, a little panel, 8x10 canvas panel. So I buy these and um, you know, just buy them from the store. They're quite cheap and I use them for practice. Um, and that's what we're going to do today. I'm getting in the habit of just doing, uh, you know, doing a couple of practice paintings, maybe two to four of these a day. And then the other thing I'm doing is, I'll show you this one. Uh, I've been going out playing their painting. It doesn't quite fit in the frame because I'm zoomed in. Um, so yeah, it's Noosa River. It's unfinished. I, I sort of um, got to the point where I didn't think I could do any more on site. But I think that's coming along quite well. Um, I'm not sure how many of you are interested in plein air painting, but if there's interest, I'll, um, I'll do some videos on plein air painting. But um, you know, I've got that to about 70 to 80%. Uh, and then I'll, I'll let that dry off and I'll finish that here in the studio um, later on. So that's a little bit about what I've been doing. I've been wanting to get out plein air painting a bit more. I've had a few back problems, um, but they're starting to uh, starting to come good. So what we're going to do today is just really some practice painting. Uh, I'm just going to play around with some landscapes and uh, some practice with some landscape painting and see what happens. I've got no ideas in my head as to what we're going to do yet. So anything could happen. Anything could happen. But the first thing I do know the starting point is I'm going to need paint. So if you've um, done our courses before or watched our videos, oh thanks Janet, appreciate that. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the way it's coming up. I've got another one there. Um, I might just show you that one as well. Just because you've given me positive feedback. You know, I don't need a lot of encouragement, but um, this one's a little less finished. So that's a, a different view of uh, Noosa River, taken from a you know, slightly different spot. Um, so I did that on Plain Air Painting the other day. I haven't quite got the values right in this one, and uh, I was starting to lose it. It was a bit hot out in the sun, so I stopped, and I'll, I'll finish that one off at home as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's quite enjoyable, Plain Air Painting, you know, getting out by the river, or the ocean, or in the country. All good. So as we get underway, let us know where you are tuning in from. Always love to know. All right, let's get going. Let's get painting. It's the name of the game. Get painting. So as I was saying before, if you've done our courses before or watched our Learn to Paint TV, you'll know that I always start off with Step one, the Moore Method. Who can tell me what step one of the Moore Method is? Moore Method of painting. G'day Deborah, welcome, Ontario, Canada. Hope you're uh, past all that snow that you've been having. Okay. Step one of the Moore Method. is easy 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 step one step one that's right Janet step one is getting a little sketch in our drawing so um, I'm just going to make up a painting here today I have no real idea of what I'm going to paint but what I'm really doing is practicing values um, for landscape painting so this is really just a warm-up for me, um, just a warm up. So I'm going to start off with, uh, can see that? Yeah, fan brush. Dip in a little bit of water. We'll take that blue and red. They look like they want to get together anyway. And um, let's do a landscape painting. Okay, I, I try and do these fairly fast um, without mucking around too much. So. Um, I, um, I'm just doing the pure practice to just to you know get started my day painting. So we'll do a little tree on a hill, and then we'll run some, another hill out that way, and we'll uh, we'll pop pop some trees on that hill as well. 
So really simple, right? That's my drawing and part of my darks blocked in. And um, that's pretty easy, really, isn't it? Anyone could do that, <laughs> right? Just um, flat brush, it wouldn't matter what brush I used, you know, to be honest. Um, little little uh, flat brush like that one. You can see the hairs are spraying in on it. Could have got the same effect. Um, it's a pretty simple sort of approach. So I'll have a little hill there. So this hill here is going to be the warmer hill. This one's going to be slightly less warm. And then in the background, because I want this to be like a strained landscape. Because what I, I do this for practice, and I pop them up on eBay, right? So I'll do some more Australian type hills in the background there. I'll show you these. Actually, that's what I meant to do. So these are sort of little practice ones that I do. And you know, I pop those up on eBay for auction because I don't want to keep them. If they're, just, if they're practice sketches, um, but they help you develop your skills. And if you learn to paint them fast, so you know, I'm doing these every day and popping them up on my eBay account, and um, and I'm getting better at painting as a result. You know. Okay, we'll just shake that foliage out a little bit there. And I reckon this is gonna make a cracking little painting. What about if we do a little bush there? We might do a path in there somewhere, don't know. But this is gonna be a ripper. Okay. One of the things I find is if you overpaint your shadows, like put in more shadow and darks than what you think you're gonna need. And then you can work back into those with your highlights and so on. So I'll pop that brush in some water. <coughs> and to, to get my values pattern right, because we've basically got this foreground hill here and this dark here. So that's going to be my darkest dark and, and my warmest highlights in here, right? Um, then we've got this next little hill here that goes back and then we've got these distant hills. So we want to establish a values pattern um, to make sure that we've got depth in the painting. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take some white and I'm going to start with those background mountains there. Okay, that's probably a little bit too light. That's sky colour, really. Um, so let's get, get it nice and blue, like they're really sitting there glowing in the late afternoon sun. And we'll just work that in. Work around those darks in the tree. Okay. Now, hopefully everyone who's tuning in here today, you've, you've been and checked out the Learn to Paint Academy and got yourself registered. We've just launched it. Um, so if you haven't done it, go and check it out. I think it's going to be a, a great spot for us to uh, put all of our future courses. I'm going to put the Learn to Paint Club in there soon. Um, those going through our more certified instructor program. That'll be all in there very shortly. So it's a good little platform and I'm, I'm really happy that we've made the move. So if you haven't checked it out, make sure you do. It's um, just go to learn to paint dot academy. So www.learn to paint dot academy. Cool. JR says lots of Canadians and you're from New, New Brunswick in Canada. Welcome JR. Thank you, Deborah, for the smiley face there. Um, for the rest of you who have just joined us, let us know where, where you're tuning in from. Um, always like to know where people are in the world. So I'll just block in a, a tone for these, uh, these background hills. Now as we come forward, we're going to warm those up. So I'm not going to block in for these. I'm just going to go straight with the uh, tone that I want. So I'm going to make these more of an Australian down south, not up here in uh, Sunshine Coast because it rains way too much up here, but down south where maybe there's not as much rain, the grasses start to burn off a little. So just make a little hill there. Work around those ducks. So those darks are drying while I'm working around them. Notice I don't clean my brush either. So if you have a look there, I've got blues. I've, you know, where are we at? Blues, there's yellows, there's whites. In the, and I don't clean the brush a lot. And what, what happens is you get broken colour in there, um, which I like that effect, rather than just block, you know, rather than mixing the paint to death, so it goes one flat colour, and then just 
blocking in with one flat color. If you allow the paint to get a little bit broken, um, then you get some interesting effects up on the, on the uh, actual canvas. Notice that line's a little bit hard there. I just want to break that a little bit. Don't want any hard edges and lines here. Okay. Cool. G'day Rosalie in Texas. Welcome. And Sheila, another Canadian. G'day Sheila. And Ray, welcome. Thanks for joining us. So I reckon we're off to a pretty good start with this one. I think what we need to do now, I'm going to put in some reds and a little touch of yellow, a little touch of white. We'll get a touch of the cad yellow light there. Let's just warm up this foreground here. So feel free to ask me any questions. Um, I'm happy to answer them. No dumb questions when you're learning to do anything, painting. Mm -hmm. G'day Ginny. Ginny, I think it is. I hope I've said that right. Welcome. Yeah, there's no dumb questions at all, so feel free to ask me anything. And notice I'm using a big brush. Small canvas, big brush. Get the paint down. Don't don't fuss and be finicky with it. I like big brush, expressive brush marks, and um, nice and loose that way as well. So if you like loose painting, um, then yeah. Now I've got yellow in the brush. I don't want yellow in the sky. Well, maybe I do. I don't know yet. But I'll just. Take another brush. I won't bother cleaning that one. I'll keep that as my bluey, or my yellowy brush rather. Um, so we'll go into the sky now. That was my distant mountain colour. The sky needs to obviously be lighter than that. So I'll pop that and I'll mix it in the same location. Okay. And then we'll just test. That's probably a little bit too dark for there. A little bit more white in there. Yeah, it's too dark. Why do you not need water with acrylic paint? Mm -hmm. Good question, Jenna. Well, actually, water and acrylic paint don't go that well together. Um, so, a lot of people think that, you know, with acrylics, you're meant to mix them with water. But you're really not with most brands of uh, water. It actually reduces the amount of pigment and... Um, Acrylic's not designed for a lot of water, so the only time I use water is when I do that rough drawing in. The rest of the time I don't use water, except with this Artillia brand. So these are the Artillia Interactive Paints. Right? Not a product endorsement, but this is what I use. Um, these have been engineered or scientifically developed to be able to be rehydrated when you squirt water on them. But you're actually meant to use their, their medium to do that um, but most acrylics especially the cheaper ones aren't good with water what you want to do and the reason why people use water with them is to keep because acrylics dry fast right um, acrylics dry faster they think I have water it'll keep it wet longer um, and that way I can blend but the better approach is to use a lot of paint like I do right um, and then you've got the paint stays wet long enough for you to to uh, to blend Okay, so I hope that answers that question for you. Acrylics aren't really designed to be used with water. A lot of people think they are. But you'll get much better results. I basically use acrylics um, like I'm painting with oils, basically. And uh, you know, the, the only difference would be if I was painting with oils, then I'd be using um, turps just to thin it down for my washes initially. Now, I know there are a couple of other questions. I'll get to those in a sec. And see this distant hill here? I don't want that to be a hard edge. So I'll just come in there. I'll just, you know, soften the edge in a little bit of drag some of that sky down into it. Um, keep it nice and sort of loose. What other questions do we have? Why are you not painting? 
your best advice to create depth? Okay, good question, Ray. G'day, Bruce from British Columbia. Welcome. Welcome. We said hi to Ginny. And Dorothy from California. I answered Dorothy's question first. She's asking, she's saying I'll do the sky at the end. Uh, I'm not doing it at the end. Um, sometimes I'll do the sky first. So I don't have any particular reason for doing it that way. But the reason why I'm doing it at this stage is because the I can see that the darks in the tree are starting to just dry off a little bit. And I'm putting this sky color in now um, so that I can just clip it into the dark and get some soft edges. That's why I've chosen to do, you can see that I've just picked up a bit of the dark there. That's why I've chosen to do the sky color now. Um, but sometimes I do it earlier on, sometimes later on. But with this particular painting, because we had this distant mountain, then this hillside, and then this hillside, I wanted to establish my value. So I started with the background mountain and worked forward. And then once I had that value right, I knew I could then go back and do the sky as long as it was lighter. I don't necessarily do it in that order. I do it to suit the painting that I'm doing at the time is when I approach the sky. But generally, I'd always start with my darkest darks and then work towards my lighter values. And the sky, most of the times, is a lighter value, which means it's further down the order. So I hope that helps. Dorothy? Um, Ray. Okay. Ray's question is, how do you create depth or aerial perspective? So there's a whole lot of principles because you've got to remember we're painting a three-dimensional world and we're painting it on a two-dimensional surface so we have to use certain painting principles to be able to create depth okay so I won't go through all of them with you now uh, because we cover them extensively in our courses so go to learn to paint dot academy and, and register for our free course because I go through it in great detail in the free course but basically here's a couple of principles for you right warmer colors okay so painting is an illusion if you're going to capture a three-dimensional world on a two-dimensional surface, it's all about illusion. So the way you create the illusion of depth is warmer colours, your reds and your yellows, tend to come forward in the painting. Cooler colours, like your blues, they recede. So automatically, by having cooler temperatures in the back and then coming slightly warmer and then warmer again, and then I'll put warm tones on the tree, that automatically creates a feeling of depth and air and aerial perspective in a painting. So that's one of the things that you can do. The other thing, and this is something that not a lot of people talk about, um, but this is a huge tip, right? You want to write this one down. Saturation of paint. So as things get further and further into the distance, there's a lot more atmosphere between it. So the saturation of the, of the colour starts to grey right off. So if you want to have a lot of depth in a painting, you want to put highly saturated paint in the foreground and then grade off colours in the background. Okay. Now, again, I'm not going to go through how do you grey off a colour because that's a, a whole other thing and we won't finish the painting. <laughs> um, our colour mixing course goes through saturated colours, right? But basically, when, when a colour comes out of the tube like that blue, right, or the red or the yellow, it's highly saturated. What you want to do is grey it off. Right, so how do you grey off a blue? Well, if you understand your primary colours, um, your blue, your red, your yellow, and work out what your secondary colour is. What's the secondary colour of the blue? It's an orange, right? So if I want to get that blue greyer, put a pinhead of the red, pinhead of the yellow, and more white, and that'll start to decrease the saturation. It'll make it go greyer, and then I'll put that greyed off tone in the background. So I've saturated in the foreground, greyed off in the background, and that will help you create depth. Now there's a whole lot of other things as well, like you want to have your harder edges in the foreground, soft edges in the background. Okay, Details in the foreground, no details in the background. Little things like that will help create the illusion of, uh, of depth in the painting. So I hope that helps, Ray. I think it was Ray. Um, G'day Margaret from Rockport, Texas. We've got a few Texans on, cool. Joan from Ireland, welcome. And Susan from New Brunswick, welcome. Glad you can all join us. Um, great that you're here. And uh, let me get back to painting here. I'm just concerned that it's going to pop off in a minute, but not to worry. All right, where are we up to? I'm going to keep this one fairly loose, a little bit abstract, not a lot of detail. Um, 
which means I think we probably will have a look at that foliage. So, as an example, how do we get you know, more saturated, warmer tones on our main tree here? Okay, so we'll take our yellow, we'll get a little bit of blue into there. We'll get some of that cad yellow warm. Okay, we'll get a little pinhead of the red. Now that, that is probably way too warm. So I've got my darks in there and what I really need now is a mid-tone and that's really a, a highlight tone. See, that is just way too bright for everything else. That'll just jump off the page. So I don't want that. Um, I'll add more blue into that. And that just tones that back a little bit more red. Hope, hope you can all see that. that that's just too strong, that colour there. So I'll go for more of a mid-tone initially. And uh, make sure we don't lose all our darks, right? So I've got the light coming from here, this way. So keep those darks, you want to preserve mm -hmm. the darks. Okay, we'll just let that sit for a moment, see if we're happy with that. So I've got those little trees in the background here. I'll just go a little bit yellower, but I'll get a little bit of this, no, it's too dry, a little bit of that white and blue into there. I need to lighten that back a bit, but I also want to cool it down a little bit with the blue. Okay, And that's good. So you can see that, like I'll use the same mix of paint that I had on here, but look at the difference. I've just lightened it off a little bit and cooled it off. And doesn't that look like it should be sitting in the background? If that was here, it'd be too. It'd be wrong, wouldn't it? It just wouldn't look right. Now, I probably painted out my darks too much there, so I just get a little bit of dark back. A little touch of white into that, and we'll just work that back in slightly. Sitting a little bit better. Got a little bit, a little bit too dark there, but not to worry. Good day, Miriam. Welcome, and Susan from New Brunswick. Welcome, welcome. Glad you can join us. Hope you're well, Miriam, and painting well. Okay, I'm just going to just touch up some of those darks there a little. Now I've just got some of the blue coming through for the mountain, so creating little windows. I'll just strengthen that up and just extend that out a little bit there. All right. <coughs> Pardon me. I don't know how much more I'm going to do with this one. I kind of like keeping them really simple and not overworking them. Okay, we'll just... This foreground bush, obviously, we need to get that a little bit warmer. It's got to be a darker as well, darker value. Pop those in there. And I kind of feel like we just need a few little highlighty patches of green in there, but not too many, I don't want to destroy it, but how about we push some up over the shadow there. This corner is a problem. Here, um, I 
not thrilled with that. I'll get a little bit of the blue, a little bit of red, a touch of yellow. I'll just put in the shadow of a little bush there. So just so that the eye doesn't just wander out through that corner. We can put a few little foreground shadows there. I'll get a little bit more shadow back into that bush there. So I'm just sort of adjusting now. Now we can come up to a more of a highlight tone. We'll get a little touch of white in that. Let's just test that. That's a bit more, a bit more acceptable. It's probably a little bit on the orange side, but I don't mind that. Australian gum trees do tend to get different tones. And now as we get that third, you know, we've got our dark, we've got our mid-tone and our highlight, that starts to create a little bit of um, volume in, in, in the subject that we're painting. All right. Miriam says she needs to play with uh, fan brushes more. And um, yeah, you do. Like, I really, I'm a great believer in, uh, you know, like I, I hardly ever use a fan brush. But, you know, I started using it the other day. I thought I'll block in with my fan brush. Um, only because I saw another artist doing it. And, um, you know, it's good to have a change. The other thing I've started doing more of is palette knife work, which is, it's challenging, but it's definitely worth the challenge, you know. What was I going to do with this? I think I was going to just mix up some of this earthy sort of muddy tone in here and I've got a few little patches of white. So I'll just fill those in. Sort of earth tone. Okay. So it's a little bit more texture and detail. I'm not going to put much more detail than that in there. Um, but just a little touch mm -hmm. in the foreground. Okay. Cool. Thanks for Facebook for the update. So I think this is not a bad setup. You guys can all see the painting and everything pretty clearly because I've had I've been having problems trying to get the right setup for um, for doing the live stream because I really want to do them, you know, a couple of times a week. And uh, I think this setup seems to work. Yeah. Let me know what you think. Like I'm not getting in the way of the canvas at all, am I? Just put some dead, dead, I don't know why I always put dead twigs in there. Bit of a habit. So, um, good question, Janet. I'm just playing around at the moment and as soon as I uh, feel like we've got the right setup, then I will publish a schedule. I wanna do, you know, maybe two or three times a week, do little simple paintings like this and then do maybe one Q&A session where um, it would just be me talking to the camera but answering people's questions because I get a, lot, a ton of questions and they're often the same questions. So um, I thought, well, you know, once a week we'll just do a 20 minute um, Q&A. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is the business of being a professional artist uh, and or art teacher and, and do a half hour chat each week on that side of things because um, there's a little bit of interest in that on the Facebook page. Let me put some fence. The reason why I'm putting these little verticals here is because I've got this strong horizontal line. I just want to break that up a little bit. So we'll pop some fence paste along there. Just a few little details. Um, the, the longer I paint, the more I'm, I'm... I used to want to put every rock and twig and stone in there, you know, and um, uh, I'd be there forever doing a painting. Now, you guys have watched me do this. This has taken us, what? Um, it's taken 15, 20 minutes. I've talked for a lot of it, right? <laughs> so I do tend to talk a lot. I'm happy you don't mind. Um, but the longer I paint, the more I realize that more detail, I mean, I love ultra realism paintings. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I just don't, don't want to do them um, because I get impatient you know, with painting. To me, like if I spend 15, 20 minutes, um, then that's a, reasonable amount of time. Oops, that's a bit of a disaster. I'm going to use the finger brush for that one. Um, so what I, the conclusion I'm coming to is to become a little bit more abstract uh, in my painting, right? 
a little bit more abstract and uh, less detail and leave more to the imagination. So there's enough information there for you guys to know that that's a landscape um, painting. You know, it's an Australian sort of bush setting, got hills and trees and skies. I mean, there's enough information there for you to know all that. Um, there's no need for me to put everything in. And that, that was a realization that once I, I sort of came to that conclusion, my painting improved dramatically. You know, um, I just want to. This is this is the part where you start fiddling and it's fraught with danger. <laughs> but I just feel like there's a lot of hill there, and it probably needs just a little bit more info. So I'm mixing up yellow ochre and white. I'm going to take a little touch of the of the blue because I don't want it to be that bright. That's more of a foreground highlight color. So there. I didn't really want that red in it, but not to worry. It's got a little bit on the green side there, right? It's a little bit too dark, so I'll get a bit more white. Now, on the palette there, that looks like a sickly, mucky colour. I'm sure you'd agree. But against that blue and in the context of everything else, it may work. I don't know yet. But here's the thing. When you put little highlights on, pull all the paint out of the brush. Because what I've seen a lot of beginners in my workshops do is they will uh, not pull the paint out of the brush and I'll get a big chunk... Then I'll go and do something delicate like these highlights uh, and there's too much paint hitting the canvas and, and they destroy it, right? So I'll just pull just the tiniest little bit of paint. Can you see that? I'll try and put it against that blue there. There you go. Tiniest little bit of paint in there. And what I'm going to do is just really try and highlight just where the sun will be catching on this background mountain. We don't have to do every highlight and this is the canopy of the trees on this mountain here, right? Might be running down that side there. A good trick here. And again, uh, I think it was Ray who asked about aerial perspective. So what I'm doing, the reason why I'm putting highlight right there, I'm creating separation for that other mountain there. I won't highlight that one. So again, it's just part of the illusion. Okay. And I'll just lightly brush that in as I get lower down. Maybe a touch in there. Okay, that just makes that background hill just a touch more interesting. Doesn't that colour work against the blue? But when you look at it there, it just looks dead and dull, yeah? Is it just me who's seeing that, or can you guys see that on the video? Hopefully you can see it. Whoop. See, that paint there is too thick. So I'll just soften that back in. That's about all I'm going to do with this one, I reckon. I might do another one if you want to stick around. Um, Bruce, I would love to know when your next live stream will be. Um, I'd love to paint along. True, Bruce. Well, what I'll do, as I said just a moment ago, um, I'm just sort of working out the best approach, and I think this camera angle and everything works. My only concern is this board is going to pop off any minute, so I'm just going to figure out a way to secure that board to this board, and then I'll start to do them regularly. Um, so in the next few days, I'll publish a schedule, because I think it's better, rather than me doing, just doing it ad hoc, I'll actually come up with a schedule of when we're going to do the live stream so you can put it in your calendar. And uh, yeah, by all means, paint along, absolutely. So look out on our Facebook page. Carol, thank you, it is looking good, and um, that pretty much is the final painting. That's all I'm gonna do with this one. Um, because, as I said, it's just a little practice, you know, just to really make sure I get my values right. So you've got the lightest light in the sky, stepping forward, and, and the darkest dark in the tree here. And that's really the reason why I'm doing the, the exercise. So I do two to four of these a day, purely just to, as practice, you know. In the same way that a um, concert pianist would play the violin, they'd play scales for an hour each day. And if you want to, if you want to be a you know, really good painter, it doesn't matter if you just want to be a hobby painter, you, know, you don't have to do this. But if you want to be a, a really top class painter, not, I'm not saying that I am, but it's certainly a goal, um, you've got to play scales every day. You know? You've got to practice every day. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, this, and because I accumulate way too many paintings, I pop them up on eBay. And um, you guys can all get the opportunity to buy one of my paintings. I know a few of you on the watching now today have bought some of my paintings. Um, you get to buy them cheap, you know. Um, when I finish off those other ones, they're going to be framed up and go into a gallery and, and be exhibited and so on. 
they're going to be a lot more expensive. Um, these ones I'll pop them up on auction on eBay for 99 cents and uh, you pop that in a frame. In fact, I'm going to go get a frame and we'll pop it into the frame. So if you could just bear with me for one second and I'll show you what it'll look like in a frame. Alright, here's a little frame, the gold silver frame. I'll pop that in there. Doesn't look too bad, hey? In fact, that frame really suits that one. Um, so, yeah, so that'll be up on eBay in the next few days, and I've got a whole lot of others there, so go and check that out. And, uh, you know, that frame works with that actually, because I've got the nice time with the grass colours and the frame colour. Um, and so, if you do buy one of the auctions on eBay, then you've got the option to get the frame as well. Um, so yeah, I'll pop a link underneath this and uh, after I've finished, I won't, won't do it now, but check out the uh, Facebook page. So that's come up okay. It's almost dry now. That's how hot it is in the studio. Um, not bad, hey? That's a 20 minute painting, basically. I'm happy to do another one. Let's do another one. What will we do? I won't put that frame there because that'll get dirty. Let's do another one. What do you want to paint? Seascape? Yeah, let's do a seascape. It's awesome. Thank you, Deborah. Now, yeah, I should be looking at you. Can you buy the paint palette? <laughs> sure, right? How much do you want to... I should go through my bin and pull out all the other ones. <laughs> Thank you, Janet. Marie, stick around. We're going to do another one. Bruce, thank you. Frederick, thank you. Do you stand up to paint all the time when you paint? That, that's a good question, Janet. I like to, I prefer to, but as I, I mentioned earlier at the start, I had a car accident a year ago, messed up my back completely. And um, if I stand for more than 30 to 40 minutes, which is why I'm not doing workshops at the moment, um, then my back and hip go out and uh, I get numbness down my right hand side of my leg. So, I um at the moment I'm trying not to stand up but I am for these and I'm good to go for about another 20 minutes I reckon before we <laughs> so it's gonna be a fast one this next one I won't talk so much um yeah I'm, I much prefer to stand up absolutely and uh so all I'm doing I'm popping tape on the back there hopefully that'll hold okay let's do a fast expressive, not thinking about it type painting. If you're not on eBay, is there another way to purchase? Would love to own a painting. Janet, thank you. Um, if you go to rodmore.art, some of my more finished work is there. Um, they're more expensive because they're, you know, they're more finished, more considered pieces. Um, the cheap ones that I just auction off on eBay, eBay is the only place. Um, so if you go to rodmore.art, or the other place is Blue Thumb. Blue Thumb's an Australian site, so bluethumb.com.au. I don't know if they ship internationally, um, but I've got a number of paintings up there as well. But probably rodmore.art, sorry, rodmoreart.com. <coughs> There's a selection of paintings there as well. I haven't really concentrated on selling my paintings too much as we've built the art school. <coughs> Pardon me, I've concentrated more on, you know, teaching. Um, but I am going to, you know, you'll see me from this point forward doing a lot more of my own finished work and um, selling a lot more of my paintings in the future, yeah. All right, let's go find some paper towel. We're going to do a seascape. And we're going to do Sunshine Beach on the Gold Coast. Uh, not on the Gold Coast. What am I thinking? Sunshine Beach on the Sunshine Coast. Right. Don't know if anyone's been there. Let me know if you have been to Sunshine Beach. But basically, I'm going to bypass the drawing step in this one. 
Um, basically, there's this awesome headland that comes out like that. So I'll just block that in the dark. Okay. And get, mess that edge up a little bit. There's some trees and things up there. Okay. How easy is that, right? Pretty much anyone can do that. Put a little bit of yellow, just because there's some foliage and rocks and things. But that's a pretty easy step, yeah? Simple, yeah. Okay, let's get, I probably want a clean brush, I think. Give me a clean brush. Clean brush. It is a beautiful area, Marcia. Oh, you're in Redcliffe. Oh, cool. One of my favorite artists is down your way. <coughs> Great Australian artist. Um, okay, so blue. Little touch of white. Yeah, Sunshine Beach is a magic part of the world. I highly recommend that everyone go there, but don't tell too many people. You don't want memes of you tourists there. Um, Horizon line for the water. My phone's going nuts, I don't know why. Okay. Now notice that horizon line is horridly not very straight and it's too high. Don't worry about it. We'll fix that, no problem. Okay. Come in here. As the water gets around towards the um, rocks here, it obviously starts to break up a little bit more. So we'll put a little bit of white in there and we'll get a little touch of yellow. I don't have any of the cagula there, but we'll get a little bit from there. And we'll just put some of that in. So I'm going to do this as quite a abstracty, expression-y, I don't even know what to call it. It's not going to, it's going to move away from realism, let's put it that way. Keep it free and loose. Free and loose. Okay. Let us do a bit more drama in the sky. So I'm going to go white. I'm going to go yellow ochre. Because the best time of day at Sunshine Beach, when I first moved to the Sunshine Coast a couple of years ago, we lived at Sunshine Beach, just down the road from the beach. And every morning we'd go to the beach. And it was pretty magical really. If I was a world famous artist, I'd probably move back there in a hurry. <laughs> you know, if I was selling paintings for $20,000 each. Okay. Um, it's just a little bit expensive <laughs> for, for my budget, but that's okay. Um, we do live in a beautiful part of the Sunshine Coast in the forest here in the bush, which I love. But yeah, um, this is one of the best beaches in the world, I think. Famous Australian, whoop. Sometimes I need to concentrate, I was waiting, picked up dark. I don't want dark. We want to make a happy sky. Better grab another brush. Yeah, famous Australian tennis player just sold his house at Sunshine Beach for, uh, I think it was about 15 million bucks. So it's, you need a, a more expensive budget than the, <laughs> that I've got for to live there, but hey. Okay, get that blue in there and we'll just work that in. Get a little bit more of that red. I don't want to stop it there because the sun's rising up over the horizon here is what we're going for. And I think it's best to put that around. Around our headland. Like so. I've taken photos that look like this with this beautiful glowing sun and it's just lighting up the sky and, and it's lighting up all the cliff face. It's uh, just magic. All right. Now, if you know Sunshine Beach, you'll know that I've just mucked that up. That headland needs to just run in a little bit more like that. Too much white in the brush. Here we go. Gonna have to wait until that dries back a bit, I think. Okay. Mm. 
Now, on this horizon line here, I want that to be soft. So I'm just going to blur the two together. And I want that to be hard because a hard edge will draw the eye out there. And that's not what we want. Okay, so now we'll start to just to firm up on this water a little bit more. Now I need to do our sand. The logical thing to do, I mean normally when you think of sand, you're going to think of um, yellow ochre and white. Look at this sky colour. Look how better bet is going to be. Take that, scrap off a whole chunk of it on the palette knife here. Oop, can you see that? Where am I? There we are. Just scrap a whole lot of that off on the palette knife. That in. It's probably a little light. That's okay. Just get a little bit of yellow ochre into this side over here. I've painted so many versions of uh, Sunshine Beach. I've got painted one for my wife's birthday, which she's got up on the wall. I'll show you another one actually, just while I let that just dry off. This one I'm working on for an exhibition, actually it's probably a little bit too big, but you can see the basic idea there. I want to do some really sort of uh, more out there colours, more abstracty. So that's another version that I'm working on of, of Sunshine Beach. Still got a bit, of, bit to go on that one. Okay, let us, let us, Practice, Bruce. Practice. I used to be slow, and it'd take me forever to do a painting, um, which didn't really suit my personality. So, um, and also, you know, like painting when you're starting to learn, it's a very much a conscious thing. You're thinking about oh, what colour do I mix here, and and uh, and so on. But uh, as you progress, it becomes. Uh, I won't say it's intuitive. Maybe it is, but it becomes an unconscious thing. And good artists, this is why a lot of good artists don't necessarily make good teachers, because they paint unconsciously. They've forgotten consciously what they've learned about painting in the past. And um, they have trouble actually explaining what they're doing. A little bit of foliage on the hill. Again, I'm you know, doing this one to be a little bit abstract. It's not fully abstract because it's obviously a subject that is a real one. But it's an interpretation that's fairly loose and abstract. I'm just going to play around and get a little touch more red in there. Red's a colour that we don't use a lot in um, landscape painting. We could be used a bit more. How's that looking? Yeah, it's looking okay, isn't it? There's a quick little demo. Mm -hmm. Cool, Bruce. I'm glad you've learnt. You feel like you've learnt some things today. Um, that's awesome. I mean, that's what I'm all about. Is just helping. Can you, yeah, and if you heard my story, and um, I'm going to record a little video on, you know, why I started teaching. I'm going to put it into the Learn to Paint Club. Not the Learn to Paint Club. Um, the new Learn to Paint Academy, and um, just sharing my story. But basically, the reason why I started teaching is because I became so frustrated trying to learn how to paint. Um, it's a little bit too much dark. Yeah, I thought there's got to be, you know, a more simplistic approach to helping people 
because I'd go to workshops with great artists and, and they were very good, but what they were really doing was just demonstrating. They weren't explaining what they were doing. Um, sorry, I'm probably in the way at the moment. I do apologise. I'll get out of the way in a second. Okay, then when I... That's all looking a bit messy and feels like a mistake, but don't worry about it. It's acrylic paint, so we will just fix that. You watch this. Yeah, that's my big challenge right now, is how am I going to get that to stay on there? I'll sort that out. Okay, so we'll get a bit more blue. Let's get our blue there. Just in through here. Use this paint just to touch up wherever I need to. I'm running out of paint, and I don't really want to squeeze any more out just at the moment. So you just soften that out is the point I was making. Don't feel like you've made a mistake, just because it's acrylic. Now, at the moment, the paint, for those of you experienced with acrylic, you'll understand what I mean. The paint is getting tacky, um, which means it's not a good time for acrylics. Once that paint starts to go tacky, is when you've got to stop painting. Right, so the paint up here is getting tacky, and it's also getting tacky on my board because I'm trying to do the entire painting in one hit. And that's a good time to stop and then let it dry off completely. If you try and paint while it's tacky, it, uh, it never seems to work out well. And that's why if you, if you watch the Learn to Paint TV each week, you'll know I'll do step one, step two, the block in, and then I'll stop and I'll go and have a cup of tea or I'll go for lunch or whatever. Why do I do that? Because I want that paint to dry off, okay? And the more it dries off and goes bone dry, um, the easier it is. To, to, to do the next step, you know, step three. Okay, I'm going to mix up a darker, shadowy, earthy tone in there. So I'm just using yellow ochre and it and crimson and whatever muck is in there at the moment. And I'll just put in some little indications of some rocks in the, the bottom there. And that's about all I'm going to do with this one. Little little 10 minute painting, um, just to show you the process. So, as I started out by saying at the beginning, every day I do two to four of these um, as practice, just in the same way that a guitar player plays scales for an hour before they start playing songs. And the thing with learning to paint, you've got to get the, the knowledge, you know, the skills and the understanding of color mixing and things like that. And then you've got to practice and you've got to do your scales, right? And that's why I do these little paintings. I mean, you know, if I wasn't talking to you guys, that would have taken me half an hour, 40 minutes to do those two little paintings. And they're not bad, you know, they're not bad. They're not, they're not masterpieces, but they're good little practices. And you can see we've got a lot of things working. And there's, there's a lot that's not working in here. It's a 10 minute painting, but there's a lot of things that are working. Like we've got this, connection between the the rising sun that tone highlighting the rocks and the sand so i've got the time it probably needs to be reflected into the water here a little bit more but as i said it's a 10 minute painting right just hang on for one sec i'll be with you back in one second So I'm going to pop this one up on eBay as well. Um, I'll start the auction at 99 cents and you never know, you might be lucky to buy it for 99 cents. And if you want, I've got the option of frames, right? So this will look really great in a little white frame. And uh, just while I open this, feel free to ask me any last minute questions. If you have a question, 
Now be a good time to ask because we're going to wrap up in a few minutes. Just while I open up this frame, I just want to show you what these look like. They actually come up pretty good in the frame. And this is something you can do at home, you know, like these painting panels that I'm painting on. I buy them on eBay. I bought 60 of them the other day for about $80 with postage, so they're $1.50 each, maybe. And you know what? If it turns out you don't like it, <laughs> paint over it. No problem at all. Just get some white gesso and you can uh, paint over it. Pop that off there. I reckon this is going to look great in this little frame. Seascape frames, I, I like them. Your seascapes, I like them in a white frame. So there you go. So I'll pop that up on eBay. You can bid on that and uh, if you buy it and you want to have it delivered framed, ready to put on the wall, then um, there you go. It's uh, the option there to buy the frame as well. Not a bad little painting actually. I don't think I'd do much more to that apart from sign it um, to come up okay. So thank you all for joining me. Hope it's been of help for you today. And uh, I'll start doing these more regularly. And make sure you go and check out, we've just made the Learn to Paint Academy live. It's ready. Um, it's going to be the hub of where we do everything in the future. There are free courses there. Um, and uh, there, there's going to be a ton of free content in there as well. So go to www.learntopaint.academy. I'll put the link underneath our uh, live stream here after we finish. And... Um, Register for the free free uh, course there um, and start learning, you know, practice. But it, but it comes down to getting the right knowledge and skills and doing what I've just done, practicing a lot of painting. Okay, Julie, I am on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. Um, Bruce is three quarters done. Well done, Bruce. <laughs> Good work keeping up. You can watch the replay. If you want more interest in the sky, would you put birds in? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I quite often will put a little flock of seagulls just to add that. But, you know, I might, if I was doing something I was going to exhibit or um, put in a gallery um, or sell on, on a website for a you know, high dollar value, then I would put a bit more effort. I mean, that sky took me, what, three minutes, five minutes. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Put a little flock of birds and so on in there. Or I'd intensify the light source, things like that for sure. Um, can I leave a pick of it somewhere? Bruce, I'll, um, if you just watch the video back, you can uh, freeze the video at the end of the painting there, so you'll have a pick of it there. Uh, no worries, Gina, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Deborah. D, thank you. Where do you get your panels from, please? On eBay. All right, so um, there are people selling them on eBay, and I, they sell them in lots of 20s and 30s. So I bought 60 the other day and um, they came a few days later in the post. Brilliant. Thank you, Julie. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it very much. All right, I'm going to say goodbye. So long. And um, as I said, I'm going to start the regular live streams uh, in the next day or two. I'll put it up on our Facebook page. Look out for it. And um, hopefully, you can join us again sometime soon. Cheers for now. Have a great day.